this song also uses animation. Animation is a very good way to grab an audience's attention in a music video. And it doesn't have to be CGI like in this song. Although CGI is probably the best, the most common form of animation now. It's really good. It, it looks fantastic. But it can either be, it can also be stop motion or hand drawn or anything else. And speaking of hand drawn animation, this brings me on to Take On Me, which is another example of uh, an animated music video. And animation can actually help exaggerate a narrative. It can make that narrative more inviting, more appealing, more, more, more brilliant. It can really show how it can, sh it can create a much more realistic narrative. It can break the boundaries of what real life can do, or re reality can do, and it can scale all the way up to anything, to different planets, to explosions and death and whatever you want to talk about. However, there are some downsides to animation, and this is being that it is very expensive and it can take a very long time to produce but even after all of that it's really worth it and it shows the artist's creativity and that really has an effect on an audience itself an article that I found on the internet uh, called Rico.net uh, states that DreamWorks Animation wants a piece of Vivo the music video giant this this kind of sh shows how how much uh, companies really want to be part of music videos these days and, and animation itself is a big part of it uh, and further down the article it says that Vivo's biggest generated profit sales uh, what was YouTube generating 250 million dollars last year. So yeah, our next um, our next uh, music video is talking about references and impressions. Um, it, it on screen now is um, a song called Knights of Sidonia by um, a, a, I think they're a British band called Muse. I really like this song as well. And this song uses 15 references from films and television programs and some of these references are Star Wars, The Lone Ranger, The Good, The Bad, The Ugly, um, Mad Max and another 11 more films and television programs. An impressionist music video is where a band or artist gets inspiration from a numerous amount of sources of media. A good example of this would be Sabotage by um, by the Beastie Boys and in this in this music video is it should be on screen now they do an impression of 1970s cops and it makes a video much more different to what it would look like and reference uh, referencing is where a band or artist reference different things within the music video such as muse have done like these films and television programs um, and using references uh, portrays that a band are socially aware and this has a positive impact on an audience if they like those movies or they like those references they like those uh, those that that year of uh, that time period then it's gonna make a nice connection it's gonna make that stronger that tension is gonna become looser band and fan and artist are gonna become happier however on the other hand this may Believe, uh, cause the uh, audience to believe that the, that the band are not creative to come up with their own ideas. Our next clip is, uh, is a parody, actually. It, it's a music video where an artist imitates another artist, artistic work or genre in an exaggerated way, which is, which is generally comical. The video being, uh, being viewed on screen now is um, a parody of the song Gangster's Paradise by a well-known art uh, parodist called Weird Al Yankovic and this is called this this parody is called Amish Paradise and it, I like the song actually it's pretty good yeah the song is it's generally generally more of a poorer quality and people who don't know the song won't understand the joke so the song has to be well known and a well-known song which um, might even cause publicity a parody of a well-known song and it, it Especially if it's strange, like if someone did a parody of Wrecking Ball and made that really comical, and really weird, and, and funny, and it might cause controversy, which will cause ink, which will cause an increase in income, and that's good for both the label and the artist. So they they get well known, they they get more uh, more more audience, more fans, maybe. Well, and it's usually for people who uh, it's usually aimed at for people who are up for a laugh. Anyone. Can, can watch a parody. Our next, te our next technique is uh, we'll be focusing on is is surreal. Um, on screen now is is uh, is the funk by Daft Punk. It's it's a video. The video features a human-sized dog who can talk and lives within the real world, but the public seem to act like the norm. And this is 
A surrealist video bears no similarities to the lyrics being sung or the song itself. Although there aren't many lyrics in this song, it's sort of it's sort of odd, isn't it? It's really weird to show that like a dog and uh, a happy song. Well, not a happy song, just a sort of tune, tuny song. Um, and another example of a surrealist video, I don't know the name of the song, but it's something to do with, I think it's called Aphex or something. And it's this old lady with a dog uh, popping up, like just walking down the street sniffs a bag and then all of a sudden this man singing and then there's little kids with the man's face on and it's really creepy strange odd different and it's just scary it's not right i don't i don't personally i don't like surrealist music videos they don't appeal to me but they're there um sorry about that little mishap if you heard that um but they're there to um entertain the the the, the fans the audience and to emphasize the artist's creativity it's it it's probably aimed at people who are a bit, yeah, you know, especially that one I just explained with the man coming out, or a bit dodgy in the head, a bit depressed maybe. I don't know. Maybe they just they just like really strange things. However, some surrealist music videos can be very strange and even confuse the audience. But that might be the point of the video itself. And that brings me on to cutting to beat. Uh, cutting to beat is where the video and the song, when the song, the song's beat and the music video, the, the music video cuts along with the song. As the song does a boot, the music video will cut to a different shot. And when they play together, it's more, it, it can make the video more real. It makes as, it looks as if the song is with the music video. It brings them together. Uh, moving on, we're going to talk about interpretive lyrics now. And you should be seeing, um, I'm on a boat by the Lonely Island, and the the whole song is about being on a boat, and in the video they are on a boat, and this describes interpretive lyrics. It is when the lyrics match what is happening on the video, as I just said with them being on a boat. The song is about being on the boat. Uh, there's also a section where the lyrics say, "I've got my," uh, and I quote by the way, "I've got my swim trunks and my flip floppies." Uh, which then shows one of the singers wearing his trunks and his flip-flops. And a uh, interpretive music video, or interpretive lyrics, it helps show the point of what's being sung, point of the song. It it helps um, exaggerate what's happening. And that is that for interpretive, uh, interpretive lyrics. Okay, so on screen now you should be seeing Eminem Berserk, which is uh, actually a homage of So What You Want by the Beastie Boys. Well, I think there's multiple homages in this, but this is about this is solely about the Beastie Boys. So yeah, um, here's a little comparison of the two. And a homage is something which references um, the past. And this can be anything like a film, band, artist. It can be anything. And it can show what an artist or band might be influenced by it. So in this case, when you look at the two, they were they were both using low camera and low ca low angle cameras, and they're both using the same style of animation or editing, and this has a positive this can have a positive effect on the fans fan base, especially if they like that influential something. And anyone who likes the Beastie Boys, and who likes Eminem, or anyone who likes Eminem might get into the Beastie Boys through that video. Um, and once again, it shows it's a very masculine type of type of tune type of song. Okay, uh, moving on to our final clip is uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller, which is an example of a pastiche. And a pastiche is when an artist imitates another piece of artistic work, artist, period, or genre in a positive way. In this case, um, this this song, this video, is imitating the horror genre do, as they're doing the zombie dance. And much this, much like referencing and an impressionist, shows the fan base that the band or artist is culturally aware, and they know what they like. They know what they might. It, it might even show that Michael Jackson is into horror. And final technique um, is that Michael Jackson's Thriller is a narrative, and a narrative is the telling of a story. And the purpose of this within a music video may help the audience understand what the song is about and giving them a better image. And Castle of Glass was actually a narrative. I was going to speak about it earlier, but I didn't because this this music video is better for a narrative. And a narrative music video, it can give more emotion to a song than just the song itself. And Castle of Glass did that. It showed the story of a young boy losing his father in the army, growing up to be in the army like his father, and then having to tell the same thing 
to another little to a little girl which which added the emotion and the people and the lyrics on their own without looking at the video people might not have guessed that i didn't guess that i had to look at the video to know what the song was about but yeah um so narratives are very they can they can show what a music video is about and i just want to say that wraps it up uh for this commentary sorry if it was a bit long but you know what they say deal with it hopefully i get a a decent mark <laughs> but uh, 